Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Anybody that doesn't know about Beth and Dana's circumstances? Who? What happened? They, they were uh, working in the field and their house caught fire and spoke with, with uh, Beth and, and um, she's taken it like a person full of faith you understand, but imagine you losing all of that. There's that, and, and her little puppy, her six-month-old puppy. So, um, so lots of loss. Our sadness for the fact that they have to endure that. And, uh, um, and yet we, we worship a God who sees things in advance and, and who looks after us through all our losses. So, who would like to step out in prayer for for Beth and Dana? Don't everybody. They're just one at a time. Lord, we're grateful for our beloved. We know that you have not turned away from them, Lord. That the faithful, of whom they are, are, are protected by your loving hand, Lord. And that nothing is dealt to us that we have not been prepared for and enabled by you and strengthened by you to endure. And giving, having said as much, Lord God, our hearts go out to them because there are precious things to them that they know are subsequent to the most important thing, their children, their grandchildren, and the lives of all of their friends as well. But our hearts go out to them, Lord God, knowing that any loss like this is something of a continuing burden and uh, gratefully in your word, Lord God, you tell us that we are strengthened through these circumstances. And I'm hopeful to that, Lord God. But we thank you, Lord, for your love for them and that you are kicking every door open to lead them and all those who would help to provide exactly what they need and what you would have them have. And so we thank you for that, Lord. Bless them. Bless them. We, we don't even have to ask because I know your hand is open to them, Lord God, and yet you hold them in the cup of your loving hand. So we thank you, precious Jesus. And Lord, we, in affirmation of the truth, we, we pray this prayer that you taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please sing this with me. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain free to all.
until my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross O Lamb of God bring it seems before me and help me Until my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. And near the cross I'll watch and wait, hoping, trusting ever, until I reach the golden strand. Just beyond the river sand And in the cross, in the cross Be my glory ever Until my raptured soul shall find Rest beyond the river In the cross in the cross be my glory ever until my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. There's a wonderful party that we're all invited to. The guest list is growing every day biggest celebration in the history of this world. The date will be announced eventually, so clear your calendar. This one's important. It's kid-friendly, so actually bring the babysitter along if you, if you can, just to join the celebration. Invite everyone you know and some you don't know. No dress code, just RSVP. People get ready, there's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage, you just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesel humming. You don't need no ticket, you just get it, thank the Lord. People get ready for the train to Jordan Picking up passengers coast to coast Faith is the key Open the doors and board them There's room for all among the love the most For the hopeless sinner who would hurt all mankind just to save his own. Have pity on those whose chances grow thinner, cause there's no hard place from the kingdom's throne. Oh, so people get ready. You just get on board All you need is faith oh, To hear the diesel humming You don't need no ticket You just thank the Lord, we pray that you guide us in your way. 
in all days, in all ways, in all matters of our life, Lord God. So that when that train comes, we're not shocked and frightened by it, but rather joyful because we know where exactly we're going. We thank you for this precious Jesus. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. Look upon the Lord and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. Those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Amen. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. John was on the island of Patmos, confined there so that the church wouldn't grow. That didn't work. As he was there, he had the revelation that became this book, Revelation. And he says this. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these robed in, in white, and where have they come from? Poor John. He says, I said to them, Sir, you are the one that knows. And then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal, the great tribulation. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them they will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That is the promise and the party that we are invited to. First John, John said these things. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed in its fullness. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. The wonderful, wonderful promise of God. 
When you look at the world around us, look at the situations, the things we concern ourselves with and trouble ourselves with, and then you see this, that the God of every little, every creation, everything, calls us his children. Is that wonderful or not? I think it is. The Beatitudes, this comes up every year, and every year there's something more to it that, that is revealed to us if we're watching, if we're reading, if we care enough. There's something new every time in these Beatitudes. I've taught it in very many different ways. Um, I used to think that he was talking to all different kinds, you know, that one person was pure at heart, one person was this, one person, no. He's talking about one individual in all of these. One in, that, that this is the, invi the, the description of the person who is God's child, what we should aspire to. We'll go through this today. Matthew 5, 1 through 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That one baffled me years ago. Poor in spirit. Well, you mean, I mean, who wants to be poor? No, poor in spirit. The person who recognizes their need. Blessed, first, blessed means, uh, it, the, there's not a blessed and uh, cursed. Blessed means it's macarius, happy. Very simply, happy are we who have chosen God's kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those who have chosen God's kingdom. We have chosen between living for this fallen world, desiring, trusting, and angling for more for me first. We've come up lacking due to the death of, or the dearth of honor and hopefulness and the lack of fairness, love, honesty, purity, and the lack of goodness and love and the lack of joy in this world lack of acceptance, all that this ungodly world, all of this ungodly kingdom lacks. We have chosen well, make no mistake, blessed are the poor in spirit. He, Jesus, first chose us, pursued you and me, but the choice was yours and mine to make, wasn't it? And having chosen well, we are rich in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. There's a lot of mourning going on these days. Oh yeah, there is that. There's an old expression, putting lipstick on a pig. It's lying about the obvious, dismissing the unimaginable. And we, won't, we won't do that here. This, this world is in a mess. Our families are hurting. Our friends are frightened and suffering. Walk through Walmart. And you see this, the loneliness, the sadness, the, the anxiousness on the faces of people. No lipstick pretties up that pig. But we don't live in this world as those who have no hope. Our mourning is felt by our eternal King Jesus, the one in charge of every moment. Shelter in God is a book, a recent book by one of our favorite pastors, David Jeremiah. I share this for, from him. I agree. Yeah. Every time I shut up, you just make some noise. <laughs> the Lord continues to protect us. If such a thing as, as an honorary doctorate in crisis and catastrophes had existed, King David would have been, been awarded one. Although he was a man after God's own heart, his life was a long, one long procession of problems. As we've seen, he spent years fleeing the wrath of a king, living as a fugitive, hiding and sleeping in caves. When he finally did become king, he immediately had to deal with geopolitical crises on every front. His nation of Israel was at war with everyone in sight. Sound familiar? David coped, he calmed the waters the best he could. And when everything had settled down on the political front, that's when the domestic front exploded. He was like a man whose career finally be, 
begins to look promising, who gets the big promotion, and suddenly he has marital trouble, and his sons get into trouble with the police. David's own sons were in open rebellion against him. The house, David, the house of David was crumbling. There were cracks in the foundation. Would you agree that David walked in the midst of trouble? If you're having pro a problem in your family or on your job, I challenge you to read the life of David. Maybe you'll feel a little better. David walked in the midst of trouble. He made terrible, fateful mistakes, yet he always remained one of God's favorite children. How so? God had promised to protect his child, this child, his child, to that promise, and God had promised to, to protect his child, and neither party to that promise ever forgot. Think about nearly everyone's favorite chapter in, in, uh, of Scripture, Psalm 23, when David is, is movingly paints us a picture of the good shepherd watching over his sheep. We see again David's faith and trust in the protection of God. David saying, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is while he's down on the bottom. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23, 3 through 4. You know why he was a, a man after God's own heart? He never doubted. He never doubted God's forgiveness, as must we. For every, every mistake that he made, he bounced right back because he took God at his word. He didn't feel like, well, that's it for me. He pushed through as a result of that. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, you shall, nor shall the flames scorch you, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, Isaiah 43. Every believer knows that when we walk through the valley of tears, God walks beside us. When we pass through the fire, he draws close to deflect the flames. When we wade through the flood, he is nearby to keep our heads up in the storm or in the earthquake or in the midst of any disaster threatening to engulf us. That's the time we feel the presence of the Lord as we've never felt him before. Other so-called friends may disappear. Their words may falter. Their support may vanish. But God is closest in the crisis surrounding us with his presence, like he is Beth and Dana now. He promised us he would do it, and our Lord is always good at keeping his word. Looking back, the mothers of the babies murdered in Jesus' birthplace. Remember, Herod the king sent, sent his troops and said, murder all the children under this age. We can't have a savior coming into, into this, a king coming into this world. The mothers of those babies in that place did not weep as if abandoned. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel, mother of Israel. Weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they were no more. Jeremiah 31, 15 foretold this. Matthew 2.17 reminds us of this. This announcement of Rachel's mourning predates the slaughter of the babies after Jesus' birth by 600 years. But even from the grave, Rachel's tears are recognized. Small comfort to a mother, their hopes and dreams on hold. And like those babies, we were created for more than our time here is but a blink. Such losses in the kingdom, in this kingdom of evil, are gains in the kingdom of our chosen. We grieve, but we do not grieve or mourn as those who have no hope, Paul tells us in Thessalonians. Blessed are those, blessed are we who mourn, for we shall be comforted. We mourn our failings when we man up or woman up and confess our most recent error, our sin. We mourn in the safety and security of God's promised love and forgiveness. Come to me, all you who are weary 
and burden, Jesus said. No one comes swaggering to Jesus in prayer, do they? We don't go swaggering to Jesus and say, hey, sorry about that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I did it knowing it was wrong, and yeah, that's that. We mourn our prayers if they're heard. We confess our sin. We come mournful for caring into his counterfeit kingdom, for caving into his counterfeit, this counterfeit kingdom for a moment. But we come to Jesus as, as one invited by the author of life, lover of our souls, and he comforts us unto joy. We know that at our best we aren't perfect, so we will face a final morning when Jesus welcomes us into his holy presence and perfects us, removing every less than holy notion from our humanness. You might want to get in line ahead of me to avoid the long wait. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. What earth? Well, the new one. Meanwhile, our, weak, our meekness here and now will open in the extended hand of God in every situation. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Here and now, we will project, promote, pursue, honor, decency, and fairness, and that will fill our hearts with the peace that surpasses all understanding. I'll, I'll say that again. Here and now, to fulfill this scripture, we will project, promote, pursue, honor, decency, and fairness. And that will fill our hearts with the peace that surpasses all understanding. And eternity will be our fulfillment. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. As such, we extend mercy to God. As God said, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. He expects no less from us. Mercy defines the very kingdom of God. Mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. There's not a nicer thing that someone can say about you than that that person was pure in heart. Not perfect, not sinless, pure in intent. All of this produces a pure heart, and mercy and love of Jesus is the expression of his heart. We emulate God's love from our heart when it's full of it. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. The only peace that this earth, this earthly kingdom will know is the peace that we will bring because we've received that peace from God. And we emulate that and live it out. I'll say that again. Look at the world. Look at the people on college campuses who don't know their right from their left, who are crying out for the death of, of every Jew. It's the face of evil, and it is a signature of this terribly fallen world. If you don't see that, you're not watching, and I don't discredit you. But the only peace that this earthly kingdom will know, can know, does know, is the peace that we will receive from God and emulate and give. We are the world changers, if there are any. The haters will hate us, persecute us, woo us to join them. What do you mean? Oh, oh, oh. But the truth that has set us free, that is written on our heart with permanent red ink, Jesus' own blood, is a simple reminder. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Tall order. I see a clue here in this scripture. The word all is repeated four times. Four times. All my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. Half 
in or half-hearted devotion to Jesus is never an option. Pray with me. Lord, we're grateful for the reminder of this today. And every hour I err, you know that, and I know that, and I can finally confess that. I'm not proud of it, but I know who holds tomorrow and who has promised me that this salvation will endure. I thank you for those who would get up out of bed, comb their hair, and come out here, Lord, to be near you. Bless them. Bless them with every, every kind of peace in their heart that, that is lacking. Give them the courage of their, of their commitment, their faith, and help them to look to you every hour of every day, Lord God every minute of our living we owe to you and let us not forget that thank you for these things precious Jesus be glorified in all that we say and do we love you Lord amen we'll gather up our offering Help me here. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I don't know the next verse at all. Oh, this little light of mine, well, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, oh, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Okay, Alton, just tilt your head this way. Notice the way the light hits his bald head. What? This little light of Alton's, he's gonna let it shine. This little light of Alton's, he's gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Last thing, the shoebox display is up. There are children in the world who have never had a Christmas gift. Well, what's Christmas? Why am I getting this gift? I'm glad you asked, little one. Because a little baby came into this world as a gift to you and everybody else to save us for eternity. And he loves you. His name is Jesus. Want to send that message to bunch of kids help us Amy quick one minute one minute one minute
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank Denise. Denise had stuff last year, the day after the, everything was all set out, and she came, she came with a big box of stuff, didn't you? You don't remember, I do. Yeah, so I mean, here, this is for next year. So that is the heart of a saint and uh, the heart of a, a giver and, and uh, not, to, you know, not to bully anybody, but if you've got it, please get it. It's for little kids that have never had a Christmas gift, have never had a gift from Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go eat some food.